मांगे कुछ करे ना मांगे की हम लोग करे
Maar ze sterven zijn voor onduidelijk. Heel wat taal een beetje.
Hare Krishna, everybody. Am I audible? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everybody. Okay, so I created that new new group and there I posted uh, the Bhagavatam with the commentaries of Vishwana Chakra Thakur that I'm using. And all the separate file is uh, Krama Sandarbha of Jiva Goswami that you can, uh, if you wish, read on your own or use it. Uh, I don't know who didn't join that group uh, of you present. A uh, few people joined there. But who didn't, uh, you can go in the main Bhagavad Gita group and uh, the link for join that group will be there, is, is there. 
So yeah, let us start. So we study the seven canto. Uh, and it's a continuation of the sixth canto because Parishit Mar Maharaj, the beginning of, of the seven canto, he inquires about uh, a Lord's apparent partiality. How is that that Lord appears to be partial? If you remember in the sixth canto, he sided with the with the Devatas, with Indra, and uh, helped them kill Vritasura. And on the other side, he heard that the Lord is uh, is impartial. So hold the first uh, twelve, I think twelve verses of of, of the of this first chapter. Uh, they deal with the explanation how the Lord is impartial. Shukadev Goswami, he gives quite a philosophical answer and explains the, that he's a controller of, of the three moods and that the people, they flourish according to the prominence of the moods uh, under the influence of the time. So it's, it's a long explanation and we have just, I think, two more uh, verses to finish this uh, explanations of the Lord's impartiality and then after that Yudhishthira Maharaj is going to ask Shukri Goswami will retell uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj's conversation with Narada Muni where he asks about the Lord's mercy on demons how is that that the Lord is giving the mercy to demons and he is giving example of uh, Shishupal being killed in Rajasura sacrifice and uh, merging into the body of of the Lord, attaining liberation. So we'll just continue. Let me just share my screen. Bhagavad which are seven kingdoms. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudeva, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudeva, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudeva, Narayanam Namaskritam Namacharya Vandarotam, Devi Sarasvati Vyasam Tata Jaya Mutiyayat, Nashta Preshu Badrashu Nityam Bhagavati Seva, Bhagavati Uttama Shloki Bhakti Bhavati, Naishtiki Om Gyanti Vrandasya Gyananjana Shalaka, Chakshu Om Narutaliyana Tasmi Shri Gurave Namaha. Kalam charantam sijatisha ashrayam pradana pumbyam naradeva satyakrit. Translation O great king, the supreme personality of Godhead, the controller of the material and spiritual energies, who is certainly the creator of the entire cosmos, creates the time factor to allow the material energy and the living entity to act within the limits of time. Thus, the Supreme Personality is never under the time factor, nor under the material energy. So the Lord is, he is the controller of the time factor, and time factor is the one who is assisting him, and he's never influenced by time. He can change time whenever he wants, if you remember during the Mahabharata Kurukshetra war, there was that incident uh, when Arjuna vowed to kill, who was it, Jadrata? I think Jadrata, before the sun, before the sunset. But somehow Arjuna couldn't really do it. Uh, the sun was already setting and Arjuna couldn't kill him. So in order to save Arjuna, who promised if he doesn't kill him on that day, that he will uh, he will uh, go into the fire. So in order to save Arjuna, the Lord changed time. He lifted the sun up from the horizon in order to give Arjuna a chance to kill Jadrata. Because at that time, I already thought, well, Jadrata is safe because sun already set. So everybody, they, they put their weapons down. And at that moment, Arjuna shoot his arrow and, and kill him. 
uh, because the the Lord lifted the sun and still he didn't break the the rules of the war that the, the, the war is going on during the daytime. So he's controlling the sun and all the planets. He's controlling the time. And he's never under their control. He's never under the control of the of the planets, grahas, ordinary living entities. Uh, you know, when somebody is born, we usually make a chart, you know, astrological chart to see the position of the planets and different influences of the planets, grahas, on a, on a, on a newborn person. So for the Lord, we can also make a chart, but he's never under the influence of these grass, sun, moon, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mercury. But ordinary human beings, they are under the control of these grass, under the control of their destiny and karma, which is shown by these planets in a in the chart. Purple by Shila Prabhupada. One should not think that the Lord is dependent on the time factor. He actually creates a situation by which material nature acts and by which the conditioned soul is placed under material nature. Both the conditioned soul and the material nature act within the time factor, but the Lord is not subject to the actions and reactions of time, but time has been created by him. To be more clear, Srila Vishnu Chakri Thakur says that creation, maintenance, and annihilation are all under the supreme will of the Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord says, Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutanam dharmasya tadatmanam srijam yaham. But never and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendant of Bharata. And a predominant rise of irreligion. At that time, I discern myself. Since Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the controller of everything, when he appears, he is not within the limitations of material time. Janma Karma Chame Divyam. In this verse, the words Kalam Charantam Sijatisha Ashrayam indicate that although the Lord acts within time, whether Sattva Guna, Rajaguna, or Tamaguna is prominent, one should not think that the Lord is under time's control. Time is within his control, for he creates time to act in a certain way. He is not working under the control of time. The creation of the material world is one of the Lord's pastimes. Everything is fully under his control. Since creation takes place when Raja Guna is prominent, the Lord creates the necessary time to give facilities for Raja Guna. Similarly, he also creates the necessary times for maintenance and annihilation. Thus, this verse establishes that the Lord is not under the limitations of time. The Lord is not but we are under the limitations of time and we have certain lifespan and uh, nothing can change it. Uh, once our lifespan expires, we have to leave this body. But Krishna, he spent 125 years on this planet when he was present around 5,000 years ago and uh, he didn't age. He was fresh youth even at the time of his departure. But on us, on our body, the influence of time is, is very much visible. You can all see when we look in the mirror how we get older and older, day after day, month after month. As stated in Brahma Samhita, Ishwara Brahma Krishna, Krishna is the supreme controller, such as Ananda Vigraha. He possesses a blissful spiritual body, Anadi, is not subordinate to anything. As the Lord confirms in Bhagavad Gita, Mata Bharataram Nanyat Kinchi Dasti Dananjaya. O conqueror of wealth, Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Nothing can be above Krishna, for he is the controller and creator of everything. The Mayavadi philosophers say that this material world is mitya, false. 
and that one should therefore not bother about this mitya creation. Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. But this is not correct. Here it is said, Satyakrit, whatever is created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Satyam Param cannot be called Mitya. The cause of creation is Satya, true. So how can the effect of the cause be Mitya? The very word Satyakrit is used to establish that everything created by the Lord is factual, never false. The creation may be temporary, but it is not false. So just before the class, I went a little ahead and tried to read some slokas ahead. So the purpose of Vishwan Chakritakura and Jiva Goswami that uh, I'm just repeating what Prabhupada said, I kind of cut and removed her, but left some parts and uh, like that. So there is no purport of Vishwan Chakritakura here. And uh, for Jiva Goswami, there is only translation of Banu Swami, which is as follows. O King, the Supreme Lord, creator of real universe, creates time, which acts as a cause, which is an assistant to the Lord and which exists along with Prakriti and Jiva. So time is assistant to the Lord. Well, Ya Isha Rajan Api Khara Ishita Satvam Suranikam Ivai Dhyayat Attaha Tat Parya Pratyanikan Asuran Surya Priyo Radyas Tamas Khan Praminot Yurushrava O King, this time factor enhances the Satva Guna. Thus, all the Supreme Lord is the controller. He favors the demigods, who are mostly situated in Sattva Guna. Then the demons who are influenced by Tamaguna are annihilated. The Supreme Lord induces the time factor to act in different ways, but he is never partial. Rather, his activities are glorious and therefore is called Urushrava. So the time factor Kala is enhancing Sattva Guna and in this way it's helping those who are in Sattva Guna, demigods. But it has nothing to do with Lord partiality because anybody, whether demigod or demon, can choose to come to Sattva Guna and in this way be held by the time factor. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita, Samohan Sarva Bhuteshu, I am in no one, nor am partial to anyone. I'm equal to all. The Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be partial. He's always equal to everyone. Therefore, when the demigods are favored and the demons killed, this is not his partiality, but the influence of the time factor. A good example in this regard is that an electrician connects both a heater and a cooler to the same electrical energy. The cause of heating, of the heating and cooling is the electrician's manipulation of the electrical energy according to his desire, but factually the electrician has nothing to do with causing heat or cold, nor with the enjoyment or suffering that results. There have been many historical incidents in which the Lord killed a demon, but the demon attained a higher position by the mercy of the Lord. Putana is an example. Putana's purpose was to kill Krishna. How Bhakti Yam Stana Kala Kutam. She approached the house of Nanda Maharaj with the purpose of killing Krishna by smearing poison on her breast. Yet when she was killed, she attained the highest position, achieving the status of Krishna's mother. Krishna is so kind and impartial that because he sat Putana's breast, he immediately accepted her as his mother. 
this superfluous activity of killing Putana did not diminish the Lord's impartiality. impartiality. His Sukhrita Sarva Bhutanam, the friend of everyone. Therefore, partiality cannot apply to the character of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who always maintains his position as the Supreme Controller. The Lord killed Putana as an enemy, but because of his being the Supreme Controller, she attained an exalted position as his mother. Means that she became uh, like a nurse, not really a mother but but a nurse and nurse is considered one of the of the mothers there are, there is a list of the mothers in Vedic culture nurse cow they all consider the mother besides one's uh, own uh, mother from which one takes birth so Srila Madhva Muni therefore remarks Kale Kala Vishaya Pishita Dehadi Karanatvat Suranikam Ihastitam Satvam. Ordinarily, a murderer is hanged, and the Manusanghi that is said that the king bestows mercy upon a murderer by killing him, thus saving him from various kinds of suffering. Because of his sinful activities, such a murderer is killed by the mercy of the king. Krishna, the Supreme Judge, did matters in a similar way because. He is the Supreme Controller. The conclusion, therefore, is that the Lord is always impartial and always very kind to all living entities. It is interesting that, uh, that the, how is it called, capital punishment was, uh, was a standard in a Vedic culture and also in all traditional culture. You had the Capital punishment that uh, one who is a murderer, he is executed. And we understand that uh, this is the best thing that can happen to him. Otherwise, if he is just put to jail and uh, in prison for 20, 30 years or for life, still, in next life he is going to suffer and be killed himself. So actual mercy to that person is, is uh, to execute him. And then in the next life, that reaction will not be there and he can start afresh. But the modern day society and cultures and modern day civilization, they, they have their own reasoning. So they, in most of the countries, they remove the capital punishment. Although I heard now in... Uh, Russia, for example, after the terrorist attack that uh, recently happened where more than 100 people were killed, they are considering again introduce, introducing the capital punishment. And I guess they still have it in uh, Middle East, is Islamic countries, where the religion is a uh, is major part of social life. Saudi Arabia, they do quite some executions during the during the the year. Of course, that can be misused also. One can be executed uh, not only for for crimes like murder, but also for political reasons. If somebody is just you know uh, political opponent of the, of the of the government or something, they can execute him. So this was one of the reasons why they. In some Western countries, in most Western countries, they abandoned capital punishment because, according to them, it's infringing the human rights. Mr. Chakri Thakur, since time is the product of the Lord, the nature of the product is applied to the Lord as well. Thus, the Lord is described as time. The Lord increases the devatas with the predominance of sattva. He destroys the demons who are enemies of the devatas. But time is the cause of disturbance of the gunas and not the Lord. Though a person makes a house, controls it and lives in it, the height or coolness of the house is not the height and coolness 
of that person. The Lord is affectionate to the devatas, sura priya. Though this is a favoritism, it is his ornament, not a fault. This has been explained elsewhere. It is said, so ham sarabhuti shu nami vishyustina priha yuye bhajanti tumam bhaktya mai te te shu chapyaham I am no one, nor I am partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever in the service and to me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. So sometimes devatas are defeated. This is arranged by the Lord to read the devatas of their pride. So when the devotees or devatas are defeated, it has its purpose to remove the pride. To remove the pride of Indra, who is very often found to be proud, and other devatas, because they are so powerful and opulent, it's it's very easy for them to fall prey to a pride. And Krishna is merciful to them and uh, empowers demons to defeat them in order to remove their pride. So how can you say that the Lord is affectionate to all beings and is a friend of everyone? He is Purush Shava, most famous. His fame is proclaimed as the friend of all and most affectionate to all. When he gives Putana and others place in the spiritual world, even though they committed the greatest sins. So Putana, she, she was a child murderer. She killed many, many children in Raj. And she wanted to kill killed Krishna, but still Krishna overlooked all her faults, all her sins, and gave her liberation. And not only liberation, but position of the nurse, of type of mother. She was asadvi. Completely opposite of, of the sadhvi, of the saintly lady. Levegatim dat triyuchitam tatonyam kam vadayalum sharanam vrajema. O evil Putana who offer her poisonous breast to Krishna to drink with the intention of killing him, attain the position of a nurse in the spiritual world. How else? Who else is so merciful? I surrender to him. Yeah, who else can be as merciful as Krishna to grant such a high position to such an evil person as, as the Putana was? But if you remember who was Putana in a, her previous life, she was a sister of Bali Maharaj. Uh, what was her name? Ratnamala. And... Uh, when the Bali Maharaj took everything, when the Vamanadev took everything the Bali Maharaj possessed, uh, Ratnamala became very, very angry. But prior to that, before that happened, when she saw Vamanadev, she felt some motherly affection because Vamanadev was such a cute, cute little boy. So she felt motherly affection. And uh, she thought in her mind, oh, it would be so nice to have uh, such a boy and uh, feed him my own breast milk. That was her desire in her heart. But next moment when uh, Vamanadev took everything from Bali Maharaj, she felt anger that uh, her father lost everything. And she, in that moment, uh, she desired to kill Vamanadev. So she had a contradictory desires. <laughs> First, she wanted, you know, to, to be motherly to him, and then at a uh, little later she wanted to kill him. And somehow Vamanadev he fulfilled the both desires. In the next life is Putana, you know. Uh, first, you know, she wanted to kill Krishna, but also she, she fed him her milk uh, smeared with the poison. So how Krishna solved these contradictory desires in uh, Putana's heart by purifying her. 
and liberating her. Let's see what Jiva Goswami says. He's quoting Paramatma Sandarbha. And he says, if the Lord has no goal, why does he sometimes not make the demons his friends and fight with the devatas? Yeah, we don't, we don't find such instance that the Lord is directly siding with the, with the demons and fighting together with them to, to help them defeat the devatas. If he wants to empower them, he just gives them strength to defeat the devotees. So the Lord is affectionate to devotees who exist among the devotees, Sura Priyaha, among the devotees predominated by Sattva, because their general loyalty to the Lord, the Lord is attracted to them. So the Lord is attracted to them because they are loyal to him, they are faithful to him. Sometimes when they commit offense to Brihaspati and others, their devata nature becomes covered by contamination. So we can have a godly nature, devata nature, but when we commit offense, it means that uh, our good qualities, our godly nature, divine nature will be covered by an artas. This is the contamination, an arta, unwanted things. Then those persons among the devatas are not favored by the Lord. So this was explained earlier. So that means once our good qualities become covered by contamination of anartas, we are losing the favor of the Lord. We are losing the mercy of the Lord. That's why one has to be very careful, especially not to commit aparadas, because aparadas uh, create anartas, and especially nama parada and vaishnava parada. And this is the the best way to lose the mercy of the Lord, to lose to to lose all auspiciousness, to lose all good qualities and all good luck to offend the devotees of the Lord and commit offenses to the holy name of the Lord. Why do the demons not follow the devotees? Because they have no taste. Since Rajas and Tamas cause extreme rejection of the Lord. See, if we are under the interest of Rajas and Tamas, we have no taste for anything related to the Lord. No taste for hearing and chanting. On, on the opposite side, we have actually, you know, rejection. We have aversion towards everything that is related to the Lord. This is the result of Rajan Tamaguna. But it is a pro inappropriate for the Lord to punish them constantly. So his Jiva Goswami is giving a hypothetical statement. It's inappropriate for the Lord to punish them constantly. That is not so. The Lord has a fame spread everywhere. Urushava, he gives the mercy also, as in the case of Putana and others. Inimical kings like Shishupal, Pondraka, and Shalva, while they were lying down, sitting or engaging in other activities, enviously meditated upon the bodily movements of the Lord, his sporting pastimes, his loving glances. Being thus always absorbed in Krishna, they achieved positions in the spiritual world. What then can be said? of the benedictions offered to those who constantly fix their minds on Lord Krishna in a fair, loving mood. So the, these demons, uh, they were so much abs absorbed in uh, Krishna, his form and his activities, that 24-7 they meditated on him. And their absorption was so strong that completely, you know, 
purify their hearts. And that's why uh, the Lord had to liberate them uh, when killing them. But of course, those who are absorbed in, in a favorable way, not in an inimical way, they were absorbed with the hatred in their heart. But still, at the moment of death, they were purified from that hatred. Uh, you know, when she, when Krishna sent his Sudarshan chakra and cut off Shishupal's head, uh, just before the chakra hit the, the Shishupal, you know, he was he was he was purified. And and then he recognized Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. He recognized that it was the Lord Vishnu, uh, his his actually master, because he was the one of the gatekeepers for Vaikuntha. So he was purified from all hatred and all bad qualities at the moment of that. Shloka thirteen, please, if you have any. Comments or questions, please ask anytime. Atra ivo dahrita purvam itihasa surarshina pritya mahakratta rajan prichate jata shatrave jata shatrave. So Maharaj Yudhishthir, he was a jata shatru, known as a jata shatru, one who has no enemy. Is such a glorious personality who has no enemy in this world. Formerly, O king, when Mara Yudhishthira was performing the Rajasuya sacrifice, the great sage Narada, responding to his inquiry, recited historical facts showing how the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always impartial, even when killing demons. In this regard, he gave a vivid example. Report. This relates to how the Lord exhibited his impartiality even when killing Shishupal in the arena of the Rajasuya Yagya performed by Maharaj Yudhishthira. And Vishwanath says to clarify the meaning of his statement, Sukadev tells a story concerning the Lord's equal friendship with all beings. So Shurya Goswami first he told philosophy how the Lord is impartial. He gave the tattva and now he, he wants to illustrate. So he gives example. And uh, this is recommended method. Uh, it's not just to give philosophical conclusions but also to illustrate and give examples, then it's easier to understand the philosophy. Does the Vedanta Sutra, which is a pure, pure tattva, is, is very difficult to, you know, to understand for ordinary humans, because it's, it's just pure philosophy. You have to have very philosophical mind, uh, very steady and peaceful mind. Uh, and that's why Shlavyasada he wrote Puranas with so many stories that illustrate uh, philosophical points. And then it's much, much easy to, to understand. And Shlajiva Goswami in Paramatma Sandarbha says, having shown the conclusive truth, Shukte relates a particular story concerning mercy to Prahlad, Jai and Vijay as an example of the Lord's fulfilling the role of acting only for giving mercy to the devotees. So this, this story is concerning mercy not only to Prahlad Maharaj who was protected but also mercy to uh, Hiranyakashipu, uh, Shishupal, and uh, Jai and Vijay, because they were also recipients of, of, of the mercy, not only not only Prahlad, not only devotee, but demons were also recipients of the Lord's mercy. 
Dishtva maha adbuttham raja, raja suye maha kratau, vasude bhagavati, sayujam, chedibu bhujaha, tatra sinam sura rishim, raja pandu sutha kratau, papracha vismita mana, muninam shinvatham idam. O king, at the Rajasura's sacrifice, Maharaj Yudhishthir, the son of Maharaj Pandu, personally saw Shishupal merge into the body of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Therefore, struck with wonder, he inquired about the reason for this from the great sage Narada, who was seated there. While he inquired, all the sages present also heard him ask his question. So this was not only a conversation between Maharaj Yudhishthir and Narada, but all the sages present uh, there in the Rajasuya sacrifice, they also heard the conversation. And Narada Muni, he was also, yeah, the Narada was there. Sri Yudhishthir Vacha. Now Shukadeva Goswami is quoting that conversation. Aho at yadbutam hietad durlaba ikantinam api vasudeve parai tatve praptesh chaidyasya vidvisha. Maharaj Yudhishthir inquired, it is very wonderful that the demon Shishupal merged into the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead even though extremely envious. This Sayuja Mukti is impossible to attain even for great transcendentalists. How then did the enemy of the Lord attain it? There are two classes of transcendentalists, the Gyanis and the Bhaktas. The Bhaktas do not aspire to merge into the existence of the Lord, but the Gyanis do. Shishupal, however, was neither a jnani nor a bhakta. Yet simply, by envy of the Lord, he attained an exalted position by merging into the Lord's body. Certainly this was astonishing. And therefore, Maharaj Yudhishthir inquired about the cause of the Lord's mysterious mercy to Shishupal. So attaining liberation or mukti, uh, it's generally attained by those who, who practice some spiritual process, either it's a yoga or jnana or bhakti. Nobody else, hardly anybody else can, uh, you know, attain liberation. But here we see Shishupal who didn't practice any sadhana, any spiritual process. He attained uh, liberation. So this is certainly cause for astonishment. A kantina means persons who are unattached to anything. So it says here in the shloka, durlaba ikantinam api. That means it's very durlaba even for those who are not attached to anything. And that refers to Yogis and Gyanis, uh, they are accounting in Kantina. Uh, they are not attached. Here Jiva Goswami explains, more Ekantina means the best of Gyanis as in, in the following. His son, a great Yogi, seeing all things equally fully realized in Brahman, with the mind concentrated on one goal, having dispelled ignorance, hid himself from the public and appeared to be a fool. But this is referring to description of uh, Shukadev Goswami, who was a Kantinam. He was a great yogi, best of the of the Gyanis. And he was completely unattached. So even for such persons uh, who are completely unattached to anything material, 
is very difficult to attain liberation. So how come that worldly king like Shishupal attain it? Shloka 17, etat vedit, veditum ichama sarva eva vayam mune bhagavan nindhaya venu dvijais tamasi patita. O great saints, we are all eager to know the cause of, of this mercy of the Lord. I have heard that formerly a king named Vena blasphemed the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that all the Brahmanas consequently obliged him to go to hell. Shishubal should also have been sent to hell. How then did he merge into the Lord's existence? So there was a, another king in the past who also blasphemed the Lord as the Shishupal did. But he went to hell and Shishupal did not go to hell. So what was the difference? Why one king went to hell and another didn't go to hell? What is the difference? Anybody can, can tell? Just to check if you're following. Anybody has idea why Vena did not go? Okay, we are going to find that little it's, later. Uh, yes, the historic. It's presumably the uh, the background of uh, the appearance of Shishupal is Jayan Vijay, plus also the Lord himself uh, killed Shishupal. So when Krishna tells his liberation immediately, yeah? Yeah, but why, why the Vena didn't go also, it didn't attain liberation, for example? But I think uh, it's only it's only in the form of Krishna when he annihilates demons that they are liberated. In any other form, they're not liberated, I think. That's okay, yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. in Yeah, the Vena was not actually killed by the Lord. It was killed yeah. uh, by the Brahmanas. But there was uh, also... Another difference in his criticism and the criticism of the, of the Shishupal. They both criticized, but there was a difference. And the difference was that uh, Shishupal's mind was absorbed in Krishna, in the form of the Lord. By Vena, he was just criticizing, blaspheming, but it's not that he was absorbed in thoughts of the Lord. No, he was just, you know, distracted with so many things. But uh, he would blaspheme the Lord here and there. But uh, he didn't get purified by absorption in the Lord like Shishupal did. So that, that's, a, that's a big dis difference. Vena's mind was not, not absorbing Krishna. And he couldn't get purified by that absorption. So he just blasphemed and he attained the results of, of that sinful activity of, of blasphemy. So presumably, Shishupal, even if he wasn't absorbed, given that he was, you know, Jay Vijay by background, they would have attained the spiritual world regardless, no? Yeah, but we, we leave that background, whether he was Jay Vijay. Now, we just want to, because in this call, particular Karpa, you know, Shishupal and, and Dantavaka, they happen to be Jay and Vijay. But in other Kalpas, there is also, you know, uh, Shishupal and Dantavakra, and uh, in those kalpas, they are not giant vijay, they are just demons, but still they attain liberation by by absorption. So it's it's not the giant vijay, they, they fall in every kalpa. It happened once, <laughs> but it's Jiva Goswami he comments that it's not proper to think that the associates of the Lord they fall all the time. This happened once in other kalpas. You know, the, the part of this, uh, the role of the Shishupan, Dantavakra, Hinaksha, Hinakashi, Puravana, and Kumbhakarna are played by, by residents of material world. It's not that always Lord's eternal associates uh, play this. So in those cases, they also attain liberation, even if they were not Jain Vijay. And how they attain that liberation? By absorption. This is, this is the key that we want to extract from this episode. The absorption in the Lord leads to liberation. 
Whatever you think at the end of your life, that's what you attain. So they thought about Krishna, and it doesn't matter that it was unfavorable because they were completely absorbing him. They they went back to spiritual world. Okay, 18. Damagosha Sutta Papa. Sinful Damagosha son. Arabya Kala Bhashanat. Samprat Yamarshi Govinde. Danta Vakrash Chadurmati. From the very beginning of his childhood, when he could not even speak properly, Shishupal, the most sinful son of Dhamagos, began blaspheming the Lord, and he continued to be envious of Sri Krishna until death. Similarly, his brother Dantavakra continued the same habits. So this is very interesting that, you know, from the early childhood, he had that hatred in his heart. Because in two previous lifetimes, you know, the Lord, the Vishnu, Lord Ramachandra and Vishnu, they, uh, they killed them. And somehow that, that, that sanskaras of hatred were carried over to this third lifetime. Mm -hmm. The sanskaras of hatred of the Lord. You know, when somebody kills you, <laughs> yeah, or even somebody hurts you, you become very angry at him what to speak about somebody killing you you you're mad at him and, and you carry that that emotion that emotion of uh, anger at that person to the next life and you want to re retaliate in next life and many times you know the those who, who were killed they get opportunity to kill the one who killed them <laughs> that's the law of the nature law of karma of course, many things have to match. Uh, the, the murderer might be killed by, by another person, doesn't need to be killed by the one who whom he, he, he killed. But sometimes it happens. Kala Bajanat means from when he could only utter a few short words when he was a baby. When he was a small bacha, even from 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 that early age, when we couldn't speak properly, till he started blaspheming Krishna, who was actually his his relative from the mother's side, I think. He was his uncle. And Krishna came to see him when he was, you know, lying in a in a cradle. And I don't remember exactly, but there was some prophecy that he will be killed by Krishna. And then his mother, Shishupal's mother, he, he pleaded to Krishna to protect her baby. And uh, and Krishna promised her that he will give him 100, 100 offenses he can do. And then after he finishes his, his quota of 100 offenses, only then he will act against him. And Shilajiva Goswami, he comments, his criticism of the Lord was an imitation only. Becoming Dantavakra was also according to the Kumara's curse. So that means because Devajaya and Vijaya, his criticism was not real. It was just temporarily there, temporarily due to Kumara's curse. They attain this demoniac bhava, demoniac nature. And that's why their criticism was a sort of play or imitation. But they generally experienced that, that hatred. It's not that they didn't experience the hatred. The hatred was there because, you know, once they were cursed, they had to, to experience this demoniac nature. Although it was not their inherent original nature. But they assumed it for three lifetimes. And they they were completely engrossed in their roles as the demons. They didn't remember that they were Jai and Vijay. Only at the, at the last moment when the Sudarshan Chakra was flying towards the Shishupal, he, he then he 
came back to his senses and he remembered who he was because he was already purified by, by constant remembrance of Krishna. Shabatur asakrit vishnum yet brahma param avyayam shvitro na jhato jivayam nandam vibhishatus tamaha all of these two men, Shishupal and Dantavakra, repeatedly blasphemed the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, Krishna. The Supreme Brahman, they were quite healthy. Indeed, their tongues were not attacked by white leprosy, nor did, nor did they enter the darkest region of hellish life. But we are certainly more surprised by this. Generally, those who are criticizers of the Lord and his devotees, they get this leprosy disease. I think in Chinatri Tamrita, we have some examples of some offenders uh, getting the leprosy. One that comes, who was that, Amogalila? No, he didn't get the leprosy. He, he, he wasn't. He got a fever and he was on deathbed, but there was another one who, who blasphemed Shiva Stakur, who put that Durga worship paraphernalia in front of his door. And uh, I forgot his name now, if anybody remembers, he can tell. But he got uh, leprosy soon after that. And then he would, later he met. Uh, Chaitra Mahabrabhu, Nimai Pandit, still at that time, and he begged him for some cure. And the Lord was very angry at him and told him, you sinful person, you offended my devotee, Shiva Stakur. I will not, I will keep you in the hell for thousands of lifetimes. But next time when he met him again and, and this person pleaded, the Lord told him, you go to Shiva Pandit and beg forgiveness. Only then you'll be saved. So he followed and he was saved. Krishna is described by Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita as follows Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavan. You are the Supreme Brahman, you are the Supreme Abode and Purifier. Herein this is confirmed. Vishnu Yad Brahma Param Avyayam. The Supreme Vishnu is Krishna. Krishna is the cause of Vishnu, not vice versa. Similarly, Brahman is not the cause of Krishna. Krishna is the cause of Brahman. Therefore, Krishna is the para-Brahman. Yet, Brahma param avyayam. Karam tasmin bhagavati duravagrahya damani pasyatham sarva lokanam layam yatur anjasa how was it possible for Shishupal and Dantavakra, in the presence of many exalted persons, to enter very easily into the body of Krishna, whose nature is difficult to attain? Shishupal and Dantavakra were formerly Jaya and Vijay, the doorkeepers of Vaikuntha, merging into the body of Krishna was not their final destination. For some time they remained merged, and later they received the liberation of Sarupya and Salokya, living the same planet as the Lord, in the same bodily form. The Shastras give evidence that if one blasphemes the Supreme Lord, his punishment is to remain in hellish life for many millions of years, more than one suffers by killing many Brahmanas. Shishupal, however, instead of entering hellish life, immediately and very easily receives a Yuji Mukti. That such a privilege had been offered to Shishupal was not merely a story. Everyone saw it happen. There was no scarcity of evidence. How did it happen? Maharaj Yudhishthir was very much surprised. So here what happened is that uh, Sayuja Mukti was just a temporary or momentary uh, and it followed by Sarupya and Salokya Mukti. So it's not that he just merged into the Brahma, Brahma Jyoti 
it just looked like for, for a moment. And after that, uh, immediately he attained uh, personal liberation, Sarupi and Salokya. Mr. Jagdhar, he commands temporarily they merge in the Lord in the vision of those watching. Sayujya means that they join the Lord. For some time, they remain with him and then they attain Sarupya. You understand what here of Dante Vakra's liberation from Narada later, but it is expressed in the past tense because he understood Dante Vakra would die. Was other watched indicates that the impossible was proven by the witnesses. So can we just make a couple of minutes pause? We already finished one hour. We have one more hour, so uh, it's difficult to sit for a long time without uh, break. So let let us uh, just make a couple of minutes break. Uh, I'll be back in, in a couple of minutes. You can also, if you have anything to do. Hare Krishna, I'm back. If you are still there, so we'll continue. Sloka 21. Before you start, bro, can I ask something? Yes, please. Um, a, a quick question. Just when we spoke earlier, you mentioned that uh, in this particular Kalpa, Jay and Vijay, uh, Kaiman, that uh, uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that. Um, we should not think that they've fallen, but but it isn't a case that they fell as such, is it? Because it was the Lord's desire, because He wanted to have um, this this chivalrous uh, rasa enjoyment of that, and and have His associates come to fight Him. So they they didn't actually fall as such, and I presume that desire and that rep repetition of um, um, lila happens. Regularly, as does with most associates that come down with him. No, is isn't that the case that they would come down? It, it wasn't quite a really a fall as such on their part. 
No, 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 no. It uh, Rupa Goswami actually. Yeah, now I remember. In uh, Lagu Bhagavatamrita, he makes clear that Jaya and Vijaya they came once. It doesn't happen regularly because it is not in a pro. It is inappropriate to think that the Lord's associates fall again and again. Uh, it's not that every time Kumaras come and curse them. It's uh, it happened once in this particular kalpa, but it doesn't happen all the time. So in these other kalpas, the Lord passes still go on, and the other jivas, for the residents of the material world, they play the role of uh, these demons, like Shishupal and Danta Vakra. This is, uh, I clearly remember the Rupa Goswami Lagu Bhagavatamrita. Yeah, I, I think I'm saying the same thing, Prabhu. I'm not, not arguing against yeah. it. I'm actually saying that it's not really a fall in any case, is it? Because it is the Lord's yeah. arrangements for them to come it's, in it's, order. It's not, it's, not, it's not real fall. It's not real fall, but in one sense, yeah, it's coming down. Uh, you can also call it a fall. But but, but then all his associates are coming down, uh, you know, the Pandavas. Uh, all, yeah, but they're coming down as devotees. They're not coming down as demons. Oh, I see. Not, it's because of the fall. Not, they're not covered by demoniac nature. Jaya and Vijaya, they were completely covered by this demoniac Asura Bhava. <laughs> and it's it's not something very pleasant for devotees. But because it gave pleasure to the Lord, they accepted it. But generally, when devotees come, they come regularly with their, their devotional Bhava, with devotional nature. And, uh, you know, they continue their devotional service in a favorable manner. Jaya and Vijaya, they didn't do it in a favorable manner. So it no, happened. No. It happened once, but it's it's not recommended, <laughs> and I don't think they would also like that it happens. <laughs> every... yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Sorry for interrupting. Thank you. Okay, let us continue. Etat brahmyati me budir diparchir eva vayuna bruhietad adbutatamam bhagavan yatra karanam. This matter is undoubtedly very wonderful. Indeed, my intelligence has become disturbed, just as the flame of a candle is disturbed by blowing by blowing wind. O oh, Narada Muni, you know everything. Kindly let me know the cause of this wonderful event. The Shastas enjoined that. Vigyana Nartam Sagurum Eva Bigachet is from Mundaka Upanishad. When one is perplexed by the difficult problems of life, to solve them, one must approach a guru like Narada or his representative in the disciplic succession. Maharaj Yudhishthir therefore requested Narada to explain the cause for such a wonderful event. So Maharaj was very lucky that uh, such a person as Narada Muni he was present to explain these things. Uh, and uh, when things, confusing things happen in our life, we might not always have uh, somebody nearby to ask uh, and to enlighten us. Sri Badarayanir Uvacha Ragya Stadua Tadvacha Akarnya Narado Bhagavan Rishihe Tushta Praha Tamabhasya Srimvatyas Tat Sada Kataha Sri Shukadeva Goswami said, after hearing the request of Maharaj Yudhishthir, Narada Muni, the most powerful spiritual master who knew everything, was very pleased. Thus he replied, in the presence of everyone taking part in the yajna. So yeah, previously, before Kali Yuga started, the demigods and the devatas and the sages, they all used to come and visit the earth where the great uh, you know, Kshatriya kings, Rajarishis, performed huge sacrifices and they would all attend. So. On those occasions, even ordinary human beings, they were able to see the demigods, which is impossible nowadays, you know. They're not going to come 
to earth because nobody is really performing any yagyas and the population is so sinful. So the devatas, they have nothing to do with the earth. Of course, the special personalities like uh, pure devotees, they can occasionally see them. I remember one memory, who was it? Yamuna Mataji, Yamuna Devi, that uh, she described how there was some stage and uh, they were singing. Narad, they, were, they were singing, Prabhupada was there with them. And at one moment, Prabhupada he became completely stunned and he, he stopped the the performer, the kirtan, and he starts singing Harda Muni Bhaja, you know. And nobody knew why he, he started singing that that particular song. And later, Imuna Madhyashi asked him, and Prabhupada said, did you see Narada Muni? He came. He came to see the Mlechas dancing in ecstasy. So he... <laughs> That, but of course, nobody else except for Prabhupada saw him, but Prabhupada could see him. And Narada Muni came because it was something really extra, extraordinary. All these Westerners, the, the, the Mlechas, they, they became devotees uh, and uh, they were dancing and uh, having a huge kirtan. So he thought it's a word, something worth of coming and seeing it personally. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, why would... Uh, great sages and demigods and devatas come because uh, the just sinful activities going on and hurt they don't want to see this but if something is worth of seeing happening then they would come so that sankirtan event with prao but it was something that narada muni wanted to see with his own eyes so 23 shinardu vacha nindanas thava Satkara Nyakarartam Kalevaram Radhana Parayo Rajan Avive Kena Kalpitam. The great sage Sri Naradaji said, O King, blasphemy and praise, chastisement and respect are experienced because of ignorance. The body of the conditioned soul is planned by the Lord for suffering in the material world through the agency of the external energy. In Bhagavad Gita it is said, Ishvara Sarva Bhutana Hridesha Arjuna Tishtati Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudhani Mayaya The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities was seated as on a machine made of material energy. The material body is manufactured by the external energy according to the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The conditioned soul being seated on this machine wanders throughout the universe and because of his bodily conception of life, he only suffers. Actually, the suffering of being blasphemed and the enjoyment of being praised, the acceptance of a good welcome or of a chastisement by harsh words are felt in the material conception of life. But since the body of the Supreme Personality of God is not material, but such a Dinanda Vigraha, he is unaffected by insults or greetings, blasphemy or prayers. Being always unaffected and complete, he does not feel extra pleasure when offered nice prayers by the devotee. All the devotee benefits by offering prayers to the Lord. Indeed, the Lord is very kind to his so-called enemy because one who always thinks of, this, of the personality of Godhead as an enemy also benefits, although he thinks of the Lord adversely. If a conditioned soul, thinking of the Lord as an enemy or a friend, somehow or other becomes attached to the Lord, he receives great benefit. So Lord, he has no material body. Only those who have material bodies, they are affected by praise or by blasphemy. Can you remember when was, some, when was the last time somebody 
criticized you, we affected, uh, or somebody when somebody last time somebody praised you, did you feel some you know some satisfaction at least a little bit? And it's natural for those who are embodied, who have bodies and uh, material egos, to fail to feel either pain or satisfaction when praised or blasphemed. But one who has no material body or who is not identified with the material body also, he feels no pleasure or pain. It's, uh, you know, if you don't have body or you, you know you're not your body and somebody comes and, you know, tells something about your body, so you don't feel affected because you, who cares if somebody is uh, criticizing your clothes? It's like it's telling you, oh, your shirt, I don't like your shirt. So why you would be affected by that if you know that you're not that shirt? Mr. Chagri Thakur, in order to explain that the Lord was not pained by the criticism of Shishupal, first he explains that the jnanis do not feel happiness or distress by praise or criticism. Because the jnanis are above the bodily platform also. Only persons attached to the body react with the happiness and distress. The body which is a cause of verbal criticism and praise, bodily and mental respect and disrespect, is produced by lack of distinction of Atma and non-Atma. Meaning the lack of distinction between the soul and the body. And Srila Jiva Goswami, here he quotes from Bhakti Sandarva. Foolish people partake of criticism and other acts aimed at persons in the three gunas. A criticism of persons within the gunas cannot extend to the Lord whose form is made of spiritual qualities. The Lord does not identify with anything in the material world unlike the jiva. Therefore, he cannot be afflicted. Yes, so the only way to go above for above of being afflicted by praise and uh, criticism is to, to raise above the bodily platform, to understand to have a realization, not just to theoretically, to have a realization that I am not this body. Only then, only then we will not be affected by these things. Otherwise, it's, it's impossible. Somebody comes and hits you, of course, you'll be very angry or insults you verbally. It, it's, it's natural. Because we think uh, he is insulting me, not my body. But one who is self-realized, he knows that uh, you know nothing is really happening to him. It's happening to a body that he is uh, inhabiting at that particular time. So why would I get angry? Twenty-four. Himsa tat abhimane na danda. Paru Shyayor Yatha Vaishamyam Iha Bhutanam Mamaham Eti Partiva. My dear king, the, the conditioned soul being in the bodily conception of life considers his body to be his self and considers everything in relationship with the body to be his. Because he has this wrong conception of life, is subjected to dualities like praise and chastisement. Only when a conditioned soul accepts the body as himself does he feel the effects of chastisement and praise. Then he determ determines one person to be his enemy, another his friend, and wants to chastise the enemy and welcome the friend. This creation of friends and enemies it is, is a result of one's bodily conception of life. 
So these conceptions of friends and enemies, they are not only on an individual uh, level, they extend to the levels of, uh, you know, big bigger social groups and nations even. Now you have nations that are inimical towards each other, and then you have friendly nations, you know. Americans and Europeans, they're you know, friendly nations, and the Russians, they're, they're enemies, and uh, Iranians, they're also the enemies, and, and like that. And this is all co caused by, by bodily conception. And has nothing really to do with the, with the, with the soul. Vision Chakri Thakur. Happiness and distress arise by thinking. He criticizes criticizes or praises me because of identification with the body. He attacks me, arises in the same way when there is a beating and threatening. Parusham, such as I will beat you, arises in the same way. The unevenness, Vaishamyam, is accomplished for all beings in this world. These are my enemies, these are my friends. I'll kill these enemies and protect these friends. So it's difficult for us to bear even verbal criticism. What to speak about beating and threatening the physical violence? But uh, Shlaharda Stakro, when he was beaten in 21 marketplace, he felt no enmity, absolutely zero enmity towards his... Uh, tormentors, those who were beating him. He actually felt compassion for them. And that was all only possible because he was completely above the bodily platform. He even didn't feel much pain. And he understood they're beating his body and they will they will get uh, <clears throat> very bad reactions. So he felt sorry for them and he prayed to Lord to you know, to deliver them. And uh, Shiljiva Goswami, he has no false identity because he's pure with no material body. Even the devotees are completely pure. Not only the Lord, but the devotees also. Dehendriyasu hinanam vaikunta pura vasinam. The inhabitants of Vaikuntha are completely spiritual, having no material body, senses, or life. So Vaikuntha Vasis have nothing material. It's a completely, everything is made from Satchitananda. And their body and their soul, they are not different. Like Krishna's body and soul, there is no difference. There is no separate identity, me and my body, no. I am that uh, that entity who manifests as, as a spiritual form. Duality only exists in the, in the material world. Twenty-five. Yani bhado bhimano yam tad vadhat praninam vadha. Tatana yasya kaivalyad abhimano kilatmana parasya dhama kartur he himsa kinasya kalpyate himsa because of the bodily conception of life the conditioned soul thinks that when the body is annihilated the living being is annihilated Lord Vishnu the supreme personality of Godhead is the supreme controller, the supreme of all living entities. Because he has no material body, he has no false conception of I and mine. It is therefore incorrect to think that he feels pleasure or pain when blasphemy or offer prayers. It is impossible for him. Thus he has no enemy and no friend. When he chastises the demons, it is for their good. And when he accepts the prayers of the devotees, it is for their good. He is affected neither by prayers nor by blasphemy. It's the same point reiterated here again. Because of being covered by material bodies, 
the conditioned souls, including even greatly learned scholars and falsely educated professors. Prabhupada is very bold. He says falsely educated professors that they're not really educated. It's all sham. It's, it's, it's not a real education. All think that as soon as the body is finished, everything is finished. This is due to their bodily conception of life. Krishna has no such bodily conception, nor is his body different from himself. Therefore, since Krishna has no material conception of life, how can he be affected by material prayers and accusations? Krishna's body is described here with as kaivalya, non different from himself. Sometimes kaivalya also means, uh, you know, liberation, mukti, impersonal liberation. But here it's a description of Krishna's body. Since everyone has a material bodily conception of life, if Krishna had such a conception, what would be the difference between Krishna and the conditioned soul? Krishna's instruction in Bhagavad Gita accepted as final because he does not possess his, does not possess a material body. As soon as one has a material body, he has four deficiencies. But since Krishna does not possess a material body, he has no deficiencies. He's always spiritually conscious and blissful. Ishvara Prama Krishna Satyananda Vigraha. His form is eternal, blissful knowledge. Such Idananda Vigraha, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, and Kaivalya are the same. Krishna can expand himself as Paramatma in the core of everyone's heart. In Bhagavad Gita, this is confirmed. Chetra Gyam Chapi Mam Vidhi Samakshetra Shubharata. The Lord is the Paramatma, the Atma or Super Self of all individual souls. Therefore, it must naturally be concluded that he has no defective bodily conceptions. Although situated in everyone's body, he has no bodily conception of life. He is always free from such conceptions. And thus he cannot be affected by anything in relation to the material body of the jiva. Robert here uses very nice words for the super soul. Super self. He is also the self of, of us. But he is a super self of, of the soul. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadaham tan aham dvishata kruran sansarishu narada man shipham yajasram ashruban asurish veva yonishu. Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, are cast by me into the ocean of material existence, into various demonic species of life. Whenever the Lord punishes persons like demons, however, such punishment is meant for the good of the conditioned soul. The conditioned soul, being envious of the Supreme Personality of God, he had may accuse him, saying, Krishna is bad, Krishna is a thief, and so on. But Krishna, be kind to all living entities, and <clears throat> does not consider such accusations. Instead, he takes account of the conditioned souls chanting of Krishna, Krishna, so many times. When the, some newspapers would criticize uh, in the early days Hare Krishnas, uh, Prabhupada would just tell them to count how many times they, they mentioned Krishna in the article and uh, he would be happy even if it was a criticism <laughs> because he knew that they will get purified even by writing negative articles if the Krishna's name is mentioned there. So he sometimes punishes such demons who want life by putting them in a lower species. But then when they have stopped accusing him, <clears throat> they are liberated in the next life because of chanting Krishna's name constantly. Blaspheming the Supreme Lord, 
or his devotee is not at all good for the conditioned soul. But Krishna, being very kind, punishes the conditioned soul in one life for such sinful activities and then, and then takes him back home, back to Godhead. The vivid example for this is Vrtasura, who was formerly Chitraketu Maharaj, a great devotee. Because he derided Lord Shiva, the foremost of all devotees, he had to accept the body of a demon called Vritta. And then he was taken back to Godhead. Thus, when Krishna punishes a demon or conditioned soul, he stops that soul's habit of blaspheming him. And when the soul becomes completely pure, the Lord takes him back to Godhead. So the, some souls, they have this habit of blaspheming the Lord. And uh, the only cure is uh, to put them in some horrible conditions where they will suffer and change their asuric bhava. And then once that... Uh, that uh, operation of uh, of changing their nature is done krishna krishna puts them in a in a good condition uh, and and uh, returns them back to godhead solution chakri takur just as an ignorant person bound in the body thinks he has been killed when the body is killed so the Supreme Lord with no material body, identifying himself as Krishna, cannot think of violence. Since he has no false identity, he is simply Paramatma. Kaivalyat. The meaning of, is this. For all jivas, there is a body which is not Atma and an Atma. If Krishna were to have a body and Atma, then he would also have false identity like the jivas. But Krishna's body is not different from Krishna. Paramatma, arising from Krishna's Swarup, identifies himself as Krishna and is made completely of Krishna. He also identifies as the Antaryami, Akilatmana, a portion of the Lord, but does not identify himself as the jivas body or the jiva which do not arise from the Swarup of the Lord. He is different, Rasya, from the Jiva and anything made of Maya. Because of not identifying with the things not arising from the Lord Swarup, how can he hate anything? And who will hate him? Identifying himself as Paramatma in the body, which is also Paramatma. Whom will he hate and who knowing him as a Paramatma will hate him. Does the Lord harm? Does the Lord harm persons like Shishupal who hate him? He punishes them for their own benefit. Damakartu, since he is the friend of all beings. So Krishna is in the heart, even in the heart of those who hate him, but he doesn't hate them because. You know, Paramatma in the heart uh, is the best friend and well-wisher of that person. So how can Krishna hate us if he's in our heart? Uh, no, it, it's impossible. So even in the heart of the demons, he's present there. And he's still their well-wisher, although they had hate him. And the sixth Tasmand vaira nubandana nirvairena bayena va snehat kamena vayunjat katanchin nekshate pritak. Therefore, by enmity or by devotional service, by fear, by affection, or by lusty desire, by all of these or any of one of them, if a conditioned soul somehow rather concentrates his mind upon the Lord, the result is the same. For the Lord, because of his blissful position, is never affected by enmity 
or friendship. By continuous enmity, by favorable relationships, or by conjugal feelings arising from strong spiritual affection. Oh, sorry, this is uh, actually same shloka, just different translation. This is translation by Banu Swami, just in, to compare it with the Prabhupada's translation, I put it here. By continuous enmity, by favorable relationships, or by conjugal feelings arising from strong spiritual affection out of fear of transgressing morality as an in unmarried lover, or even as a married lover, the mind should concentrate on the Lord. One will realize a relationship with the Lord only according to the mode of practice. It's slightly different translation, but the, the essence is the same. Uh, the essence is that uh, the conditioned soul somehow or other should concentrate the mind on the Lord. And if he concentrates the mind on the Lord, the result will be the same, regardless of the relationship and, and, ras, and rasa. Purport. From this first one should not conclude that because Krishna is unaffected by favorable prayers or unfavorable blasphemy, one should therefore blaspheme the Supreme Lord. This is not the regulative principle. Bhakti Yoga means Anukulena Krishna Anushilanam. One should serve Krishna very favorably. This is the real injunction. Here it is said that although an enemy thinks of Krishna unfavorably, the Lord is unaffected by such anti-devotional service. Thus he offers his benedictions even to Shishupal and similarly inimical conditioned souls. This does not mean, however, that one should be inimical towards the Lord. So there is no sadhana of becoming the Lord's enemy. It's, it's not a recommended practice. And uh, one should not even try to at attempt it, you know, to become the Lord. One may think, oh, after reading this, oh, it's easier to, to be a demon than a devotee. So let me let me become a demon and uh, I'll be con constantly absorbed in Krishna. He'll kill me and uh, I go back to Godhead. But it's it's not going to happen like that. It doesn't work like that. When uh, he was criticizing the Lord and he went to hell. The stress is given to the favorable execution of devotional service not purposeful blasphemy of the Lord. It is said, Nindham Bhagavata Srinvams Tat Parasya Janasya Va Tato Napaiti Ya Sapi Yat Yada Sukrita Achyuta. One who hears blasphemy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his devotees should immediately take action or should leave. Otherwise, he'll be put into hellish life perpetually. There are many such injunctions. Therefore, as a regulative principle, one should not be unfavorable towards the Lord, but always favorably inclined toward Him. So this is interesting that uh, one should not tolerate the blasphemy uh, of the Lord or his devotees. Actually, there is an injunction that uh, one should cut the tongue of a blasphemer, but generally, when it's not possible, and generally it's not possible, one should just leave, go away. Otherwise, by staying, uh, you also get the sinful reaction. <clears throat> I remember when I was still a young boy uh, and my parents, they didn't want me to be a devotee, so they took me to some psychiatrist who was actually a deep programmer. In those days, they had these people who who kind of deep programming those who, who were joining a certain 
religious cults, sects, and things like that. So that that person, he somehow, uh, when they brought me to his uh, office, he starts speaking something uh, about Nisinghadev. He actually actually researched and studied, and he knew that uh, you know the. That, that uh, in a uh, Hare Krishna movement, there is a god who looks like a half man, half lion, and he has you know these snakes around him. So the, he he tried to tell me that this cannot be a god because how god can have a snakes, uh, and uh, and just by listening to him for a few minutes, I I felt like uh, you know my heart <laughs> becoming a and. Uh, like a block of ice, like like a like a like a stone. I, I felt such a contaminating influence that I felt very very sick. So I just jump off the chair and storm out of the door and uh, just run away from that building, uh, very far away. <laughs> My parents stayed there, uh, very perplexed, uh, and I felt very very bad for for a couple of days because the the you know that contaminating influence of that person who really had a demoniac nature criticizing god in that particular case nishima uh, he really had a hatred of god and i never be, before and never later i really met uh, a real demon but that was one <laughs> my experience with the with the present with the demons in Kali Yoga. He had a really demoniac nature and, and I felt it. I, I felt it. I felt so sick. You know, the, the heart became like a like a like ice block. And it took me a couple of days to 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 again come back to normal. You know, because the, the the association of these couple of minutes that I sit sat there was so contaminating. So you can imagine how how contaminating demoniac Baba is so that's why one is advised to leave immediately otherwise he will get so contaminated that he won't be able anymore to to do anything yeah. anyway this is just one short memory Shishupal's achievement of oneness with the supreme lord was different because Jaya and Vijaya from the very beginning of their material existence were ordained to treat the Supreme Lord as an enemy for three lives and then return home back to Godhead. Jaya and Vijaya inwardly knew that the Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but they purposely became his enemies to be delivered from material life. From the very beginning of their lives, they thought of Lord Krishna as an enemy, and even though blaspheming the Lord Krishna they chanted the holy name of Krishna constantly along with their inimical thoughts. Thus they were purified because of chanting the holy name of Krishna. It is to be understood that even a blasphemer can be freed from sinful activities by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Certainly, therefore, freedom is assured for a devotee who is always favorable to the service of the Lord. This will be clear from the following verse. By rapt attention fixed upon Krishna, one is purified, and thus one is delivered from material life. Shlavishna Chakri Thakur is very nicely explained the word bhayena, which means by fear. When the gopis went to Krishna in the dead of night, they certainly feared chastisement by their relatives their husbands, brothers and fathers, but nonetheless, not caring for their relatives, they went to Krishna. There was certainly fear, but this fear could not check them, check their devotional service to Krishna. So we have to understand the cultural context uh, in which gopis, they went to the forest. It, it was very traditional Vedic society where it's un, unimaginable for for lady or young girl to go out during the night. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's just something unheard of. So certainly they were very much afraid because in, in that type of society, this is something very much condemned. 
of course nowadays uh, you know the young girls and ladies they go home night and come back nobody will blink but in those days it was very much different so they had to overcome that fear which was the greatest obstacle one should not mistakenly think that Lord Krishna must be worshipped by an inimical attitude like that of Shishupal. The injunction is anukulyasya grahanam pratikulasya varjanam. One should give up unfavorable activities and, and accept only favorable conditions in devotional service. Generally, if one blasphemes the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is punished. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Tanaham Vishita Kruran Sansarishunaradaman Kshipam Yajasram Ashuban Asturish Veva Yonishu. I guess we read this just recently. There are many such injunctions, one should not try to worship Krishna unfavorably, otherwise, he must be punished at least for one life to be purified. As one should not try to be killed by bracing an enemy, a tiger or a snake. One should not blaspheme the Supreme Personality of Godhead and become his enemy in order to be put into hellish life. The purpose of this verse is to emphasize that even the enemy of the Lord can be delivered, not to speak of his friend. Shlomadvacharya also says in many ways that one should not blaspheme Lord Vishnu to one's mind, words, or actions. For a blasphemer will go to hellish life along with his forefathers. Karmana mana savacha yod vishyad vishnu avyayam majanti pittaras tasyan naraki shashvati samaha. Bhagavad Gita, the law says, Tanahan vishatta kruran. <laughs> this is the third time I think that we are reading this. I'll, I'll skip it now. Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, are cast by me into the ocean of material existence, into various demonic species of life, attaining repeated birth among the species of demonic life. Such persons can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the most abominable types, type of existence. One who blasphemes the Lord is put into a family of asuras, in which there is every chance of forgetting the service of the Lord. So this is interesting. One who blasphemes the Lord is born in the demoniac family where he has opportunity to, to continue his blasphemy. Well, Krishna further states in Bhagavad Gita, Ava jananti maam huda manushin thanu mashritam param bhava jananto mama bhuta maheshwaram. Mudas, rascals, blaspheme the Supreme Lord because he appears exactly like a human being. They do not know the unlimited opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mogasya moga karmano, moga jnana vichetasa, rashasim asurim chaiva, prakriti mohinim ashritaha. Anything done by those who have taken the attitude of enemies will be baffled. Mogasya. If these enemies try to be liberated or to merge into the existence of Brahman, if they desire to be elevated to the higher planetary systems as karmis, or even if they desire to return home back to Godhead, they'll be certainly be baffled. So this is the recipe for failure. Criticize the Lord, become enemy of the Lord, everything materially, spiritually in your life will collapse. It, it, it's a disaster recipe. And as you know, they have these success success recipes, how to become materially successful, do this, this, and that. And certainly you will get material opulence. But this is the recipe for material and spiritual disaster. Become a demon. As for Hinikashipu, although he was extremely inimical towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he always thought of his son, who was a great devotee, Therefore, by the grace of his son Pralad Maharaj, Hinakashipu was also delivered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The thing here Prabhupada says that he always thought of his son. Yeah, yeah, the Hinakashipu was thinking of Pralad. 
because naturally father thinks of the son first he was thinking favorably then he was thinking uh, out of anger in a kashi push chapi bhagavan nindaya thama vivakshur atyaghat suno pradasyanu bhavata the conclusion is that one should not give up your devotional service for one's own benefit. One should not imitate Rikashi Purshishupal. This is not the way to achieve success. And Srila Vishwanchari Thakur says, What is wrong with the criticizing the Lord since it does not affect the Lord in any way? So it's a question, yeah. The Lord is not affected, so what's wrong with that? Answer is that criticizing will generate bad karma for himself. This is stated through Kaimutya. Nindam Bhagavata Srinvam Stat Parasya Janasyava Tato Napaiti Yaso Piyat Yada Sukrita Chittaha I think Prabhupada also quoted this one from Vishwana Chagaritaku. One who hears blasphemy of the Supreme Lord or his devotees should immediately take action or should leave, otherwise he will be put into hellish life. This is true. There are two types of criticism, favorable and unfavorable. The favorable type of criticism is a transformation of prema. So gopis, they often criticize Krishna and just the manifestation of their prema. It's not a real criticism. It's an expression of love. Like a hunter, he cruelly shot the king of the monkeys with arrows. Because he was conquered by a woman, he disfigured another woman, speaking, the sloka is speaking about uh, Lord Ramachandra, who came to him with the lusty desires. Shrupanaka, it was Shrupanaka. And even after consuming the gifts of Bali Maharaj, he bound him up with the ropes as if he were a crow. So let us give up all friendship with this dark complexion boy, even if we can give up talking about him. This is Gopi speaking. This is spurt of light on the crash jewel of Prema, not attained by anyone except the Gopis. Unfavorable criticism has two types. That arising from absorption in the Lord. And that which does not arise from absorption in the Lord. The worst type takes place in Shishupal. The bad karma created by his criticism was destroyed immediately by his absorption in the Lord. So although he criticized because uh, he was absorbed, it was neutralized. The bad karma was neutralized by absorption. So by Bhakti Yoga, he attained a neutral condition and then he attained qualification of Vaidhi Bhakti. This is now described in seven verses. The meaning of the first statement in this verse, therefore, is since the Lord is not pained by criticism and the sins of the criticizer are destroyed by that absorption, the mind should concentrate on the law with absorption as an enemy. Nirvairena means without enmity with Bhakti Yoga. The mind should not concentrate, I think. It refers to parental or other relationships mentioned as Sambandha in the verse 31. Kama means karma generated by prema, snehat. Sneha cannot be regarded as a separate sadhana, since all the other sadhanas are in the instrumental case. The result is described. One should not see the law differently at all, but should directly see him according to one's own emotions. However, in the case of those who have enmity or fear, the words mean either of these persons having hatred or fear does not see himself different from the Lord. By telling Sayuja, they realize themselves not different from him. 
anybody remembers example of uh, of a person who was was absorbing Krishna out of fear, not out of hell, but it was a fear that was that made him think of him constantly. Kamsa. Kamsa, yes, he was constantly, you know, out of of fear while walking, sleeping, eating, meditating on Krishna, thinking how he is going to come and kill him. So one statement can have a different meaning according to different to a difference in the person in question. But this is quite a long, long purport. Yeah, I didn't have time to go through this one. I think it's just more or less making the same point, but it's important. Let let's let's read it because it's a very important point. The mind should become absorbed in the Lord by continuous enmity, bhakti, or conjugal feeling. So somehow or other the mind should become absorbed in the Lord. This is a command. This, however, cannot apply to Shishupal and others since they have no attraction for the Lord. One cannot also explain it as an order for other persons to have enmity towards the Lord, seeing the example of Shishupal and others, since it's impossible to make a comment to a devotee to do something unfavorable for the Lord. So you cannot order somebody, just hate Krishna, and this way you'll attain him by being absorbed in him. It's, it's impossible to make such an order. It is said, Anukulasya, Grahanam, Pratikulasya, Varjanam, those who surrender to the Lord accept what is favorable and reject what is unfavorable for the Lord. Nor does continuous enmity directed to other people by Shishupal generate absorption in the Lord. For this is a contrary to thousands of con contrary statements like this one uh, that we already read from Bhagavad Gita. One should also not say that continuous enmity for the Lord after producing genuine attraction for the Lord will not produce hell, since this genuine attraction did not occur in Shishupal. One should also not say that this is an arrangement for persons other than Shishupal, since one cannot find actions directed with enmity to the Lord in all the rules of Scripture. So his enmity certainly created absorption in the Lord. By understanding that the Lord would kill him, he heard so and respected the Lord. Just as a person understanding that a tiger or snake will kill him, becomes absorbed in that animal with the fear and not in any other object. And just imagine a person which is locked up in a cage with a tiger. So what is he going to be absorbed in? In, in a tiger, because tiger is going to eat him. And all he can think about is, is the tiger. Therefore, some persons explain the verse as follows. Since the Lord gives benefit even to those with animosity, the mind should become absorbed in the law with the mood opposite to animosity. Since the animosity is not proper, the word therefore at the beginning of the verse thus has a negative implied in it, but not written. The meaning would be therefore those with animosity, giving it up with a mood other than enmity should engage the mind in, in the Lord as a friend or parent. So th th this is an example of uh, how by saying one thing, you you convey another thing by, by negative implying in it. Like uh, there was that verse of, of Rupa Goswami, he's saying, uh, don't go to the Kishigat uh, if, if you don't want to be attracted by that... Uh, boy who plays a flute uh, meaning that uh, you should go you should become attracted to him but it's expressed in a negative way what type of enmity is ne necessary continuous enmity should be there and this produces complete absorption in the lord 
So the feeling uh, of uh, this, in this case of enmity, should be continuous to produce complete absorption. If you just have some sporadic, you know, emotions of enmity here and there, it's not going to produce absorption. It has to be continuous emotion to produce continuous absorption, complete absorption. So one who has a continuous enmity has absorption in the Lord. Weak enmity is excluded. Yeah, the small demons who just sometimes hear the Lord, uh, hate the Lord, or blaspheme him here and there occasionally, they they don't attain absorption, and uh, all they attain is a sin. Snehat kamena means by lust, caused by only by affection. Is further described by the word bhayena, by lust following after the young women of Raj, who had fear arising from rejecting the moral path of their elders. Bhayena va indicates that there is also lust without fear. This indicates persons following after devotees like Rukmini, who had conjugal feelings in marriage without fear. So two types of, of, of transitable karma. This is not ordinary lust. Uh, the, it's a sneha type of <laughs> uh, type of prema, actually. So it can be one with the fear, uh, like in the case of the of gopis, because they fear their elders, uh, while uh, Queen Sudvaraka, like Rukmini, uh, they had no nobody to fear because Krishna was their husband, so they had uh, conjugal feelings without without fear. So scriptures indicate both unmarried and married conjugal relationships. Strong affection greater than anything else arises by thinking of the Lord as one's unmarried lover. This is from Brihadvamana Purana. And then from another, another Kurma Purana, we have a quotation. The great sons of Agni by austerities became women. Their husband was un, the unborn Lord Krishna, cause of the universe. So the point here, in order to become absorbed in, in Krishna, there has to be a strong, strong emotion. So strong hatred is one of those strong emotions that uh, can absorb one's mind in Krishna. But even stronger that, that hatred uh, is, is uh, karma or or lust. Lust is generally material world is considered uh, you know the strongest uh, the strongest enemy, and it's the strongest emotion. Uh, people do crazy things out of of lust. You know they kill each other and so many things. They they lose their head. They become mad because of lust. Lust is such a strong strong material emotion. So same same lust karma when it's directed towards Krishna. It it becomes you know, it becomes transcendental, but because it's it's such a strong emotion, uh, it uh, it absorbs the mind uh, of a person who is who has conjugal attraction towards Krishna, like gopis do. That's why the gopis absorption is 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 the strongest. It is stronger than uh, absorption of devotees in all other rasas, uh, like those who are Krishna's friends or parents. Uh, they are they are all absorbed by the gopis because there is this conjugal, transcendental karma. They are the most absorbed, and the uh, gopis they are more absorbed than the queens of of Dwaraka because their 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 prema and their attraction is stronger than the prema and attraction of the queens of Dwaraka. Okay, I think uh, we should we should stop here. It's already eight o'clock. If you have any final final comments or questions, so Chatura Mataji is also here. I didn't notice her at the beginning. Uh, Hare Krishna, Chatura Mataji. Yeah, sorry, Babu, I forgot. 
<laughs> I please, it... please, there is that another group uh, also that uh, I made another group. Uh, so in in the main group you have a link. You can join that other group, and there you can uh, you can download uh, these uh, files that uh, I'm using here. And also I can post the invitation there. Then uh, then you you will remember <laughs> easier. Oh, okay, Just join, okay. join that other Telegram group. Uh, okay, okay. Know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So it must be very late for you there. For, for me, it's already eight o'clock. Uh, and yeah. for Shailesh, probably it's probably three or three, three, three thirty in UK. Okay. Yes, if yes, if yes, you yes. don't have. have... Prabhuji, uh, uh, the, of the three files you posted, one is a dot pub file. Is that a publisher file required? Presumably, we need a reader for that, yeah? On that word file of Kramas and Darba, you mean? uh yeah there are three files you posted two of them are uh we can one is one, a, one is a pdf one. another is an epub uh. epub yeah so that that's the one uh, presumably we need a book reader for that yeah yeah for epub uh yeah you generally book reader but sometimes some uh pdf readers uh like sumatra Sumatra for PC, they can also open EPUB files. If you just download it's a free reader called Sumatra, you can open okay. EPUB. It, it's a kind of smaller and it's uh, easier to go through it. Uh, but Sumatra uh, would be the PDF reader that can read it. Uh, I can post a link where to download it if you cannot find it. Thank and you. yeah, the Word file is just for the seventh canto of Karma Sandarva. I have other files if I can also sometimes. Was them, but Do you have the whole of this on the Yeah, I have, I have whole Karma Center, but I, but I would need first to upload it somewhere on uh, on Google Drive, and then I I can post the link. Uh, yeah, I have, fantastic. Yeah, because I can't I can't find anything with. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll, 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 I'll remember. Okay, so I'll, I'll remember uploading on Google Drive, then I put a link, and you download the the, the whole folder. This is all just Baban Marad's translation that he worked with, and then uh, later they. He put it in, in, a, in a book, uh, but the original, the original files, I think. Banu Swami's uh, attempts to do the translations uh, from uh, his his are they are they supposed to be um, complementary to uh, Shri Prabhupada's uh, translations? Because some of them are quite different, aren't they? Yeah, he's he's just doing uh, translating on his own, uh, and he's doing it quite quite fast sometimes he makes some mistakes here and there but uh, he's producing many books and he has no not much time like Kushakrata Prabhu he was also you know translating very fast and that's why he he managed to translate so many books so Banu Maharaj is also basically just doing fast going to the text once and he translates and uh, he just wants to translate all the books that are not translated and it's 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 good for, for us but they are not always the perfect translations. In BBT, they would uh, do it much more, you know, diligently. And but it takes them long, long time to produce just one book. They are still working on that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that Banu Maharaj he he published it long time ago, and they are already working for quite some years. They are at the end very soon, and they are going to publish it. So I guess it will be better than Banu Maharaj translation, but it takes them long time to produce to produce it. And he makes few mistakes here and there, but uh, overall, it's 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 better to have it than not to have it. So, we sh we should you know utilize it. Why not if it's there? Because there is no other translation at the moment, uh, yeah. and it's not hundred percent perfect. But you know, ninety five percent doesn't really matter. Yes. Okay. So. And uh, are you okay for two hours, Prabhu? Or are you, do you seem a little tired? You're okay for doing two hours? Yeah, yeah for now it's okay. But once I'm in, in Europe, we might need to change something or maybe even make us some break. Let's see how it goes. But till okay. June, we're okay. Once the June starts, we will we'll talk. And I don't know the the others, uh, the Danashi Madaji you are managing. It's you said it's kind of late for you. <laughs> I think we can we can still go to. Uh, to Krishna, Bab, sorry, yeah. yeah, I still have uh, to adjust myself, adapt myself to the situation, but it's okay. Yeah, 
I'm also not a late uh, type of person. I, I, I like to go to bed earlier, but but now at least uh, I don't have to do anything else after this. Uh, we can go to bed quickly and then still get up early. So yes, that is true. Yes, but it's good that we do this before before sleep because now you will have a spiritual <laughs> spiritual course, dreams yes. at least. I appreciate yes, it. Prabhu, that is the good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. Prabhupada actually <laughs> recommending before going to sleep. I read the Krishna book half an hour. So we are in Bhagavatam, so it's a similar. So it's it, it's it's a good thing before going to bed. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we okay. we vlog. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, thank you, thank you thank for coming. We're very, very indebted to you for making this effort. Yeah, really. Are. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also welcome. So please, those who didn't subscribe to the, the new group, because I'll be posting these files there, just please join the new 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 Bhagavad Dharma. It's called Bhagavad Dharma Telegram group there. Hare Krishna. Good night. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.